In this module, we are going to discuss about echocardiography of atrioventricular septal defects. Morphologically, they are classified into complete defects, intermediate defects, transitional defects and partial defects. Complete defects are characterized by a totally single AV ring with five common leaflets that form the entire AV valve apparatus. In intermediate types of AV septal defects, the ring is common but there is a small tongue of tissue that is connecting the superior and the inferior bridging leaflets. Transitional type of AV septal defects have got two reasonably well formed rings but there is a small tongue of tissue that is connecting the superior and the bri inferior bridging leaflets. The partial AV septal defects have clearly well separated AV valve rings. Complete AV septal defects will represent the classical prototype of AV septal defects. They may be grouped as balanced defects and unbalanced defects depending on this amount of support given by both the ventricles. Unbalanced defects are those in which either of one of the ventricles may be hypoplastic. Intermediate AV septal defects have got a small tongue of tissue between the superior and inferior bridging leaflets. They are relatively rare compared to the complete AV septal defects. Transitional AV septal defects are also rare. They are associated with restrictive inlet VSD and they have fairly well formed two separate AV valve rings. Partial AV septal defects or in other words primometrial septal defects are very common. And they have two well separated AV valve rings. Epical four chamber view of a common type of complete AV septal defect. We can appreciate a large inlet ventricular septal defect. The two ventricles are nearly symmetrical. So this is a balanced AV septal defect. The right ventricular hypertrophy is a common feature because the right ventricle sustains nearly systemic pulmonary artery pressures. There is a large inlet ventricular septal defect. We can appreciate the bridging leaflet cordae getting attached to the crest of the interventricular septum. There is in addition a small mid-muscular VSD which we can appreciate. We can appreciate a large inlet ventricular septal defect located beneath the inferior bridging leaflet. There is bidirectional color flow through that inlet ventricular septal defect. We can also notice a moderate AV valve regurgitation seen on the left side of the component of AV valve towards the left atrium. The ventricular function is good. When we look at the short axis of the AV valve from subsified view, we can notice that there is a common AV valve ring with separate superior and inferior bridging leaflets visualized very well. The same view shown in the previous AVI loop is demonstrated on three dimensional echo here. This is a short axis view obtained from sub window. We are viewing from the apex of the ventricles. We have cropped off the apical and mid portion of the ventricles and we are looking towards the basal portions of the ventricles. The superior and inferior bridging leaflet have been named as S and I. We can notice that there is a large inlet ventricular septal defects on either sides of the bridging leaflet. The left mural leaflet is shown on the left ventricle and the whole of the right sided AV valve orifice is shown as R.
we can notice that the aortic root is anteriorly displaced. Normally the aortic root is wedged between the left and the right atrioventricular valves. However, in AV septal defects, the aortic valve gets anteriorly displaced. When we draw the ventricular view, as seen in the previous two slides, as a cartoon, we can notice that a complete AV septal defect is formed of five AV valve leaflets. The superior and the inferior bridging leaflets are the two major leaflets that bridge the atrioventricular valve. On the left side, you will have the left mural leaflet which is the equivalent of posterior mitral leaflet in a normal heart. On the right side, we will have a right anterior leaflet and a right posterior leaflet. After seeing the cartoon, when we again have a look at the short axis view of the AV valve ring, we can appreciate the superior and the inferior bridging leaflets and the left neural leaflets very well. We can notice that the commissures that separate the right sided leaflets from the superior and inferior bridging leaflet have got the commissural cordae which get attached to the crest of the interventricular septum. The superior and inferior bridging leaflets will be mostly be confined to the regions of left ventricle. This is a feature of Rastelli type A AV valve which is the commonest type of atrioventricular valve. On the three dimensional echocardiogram when we move the image plane a little bit more to include the mid portions of the ventricular septum we can appreciate the two papillary muscles. Unlike in a normal heart, the two papillary muscles attachment are counterclockwise rotated. In a normal heart, the two papillary muscles on a short axis will appear at around 4 o'clock and 8 o'clock positions. Whereas, in an AV septal defect, it will be rotated in a counterclockwise direction so that they will be seen at around 3 o'clock and 5 o'clock locations as seen in this picture. The superior and the inferior bridging leaflets can be well appreciated. The inferior bridging leaflet is seen with a lot of mobility. We can appreciate that the caudal attachment from the commissures that guard the bridging leaflets with the right sided leaflets are getting attached towards the crest of the interventricular septum, a feature of Rastelli type A defect. In Rastelli type A defect, the bridging leaflets mostly overlie the left ventricle. On the same subsified short axis view, when we use color Doppler, we can appreciate the flow of blood across the inlet ventricular septal defect. We can notice here that beneath the inferior bridging leaflet, there is a color flow from the left ventricle towards the right ventricle. And hence, we can appreciate that the VSD is primarily located beneath the inferior bridging leaflet. On a subsified coronal view, we can again notice the inlet ventricular septal defect located beneath the inferior bridging leaflet. This can be appreciated when we make a very posterior sweep in the subsified coronal view to get the structures below the inferior bridging leaflet. We can also notice here that there is an additional second matrix septal defect. This is an on fast view of the right ventricular septal surface obtained on three dimensional echocardiography after cropping off the entire right ventricular anterior free wall. In this view, we expose the entire interventricular septum as seen from the right ventricular side. Postro inferiorly, we notice the inlet septum. Superiorly, we notice the outlet septum. And towards 
the right hand of the screen, we notice the apical trabecular septum. The large inlet ventricular septal defect in the previous example is shown with two arrows. The inlet ventricular septal defect is primarily confined in this particular example below the inferior bridging leaflet. When the commissural cordae from the superior and inferior bridging leaflets attach towards the crest of intraventricular septum, they might close off the inlet ventricular septal defect in those areas. If the bridging leaflet cordae below the superior bridging leaflet are so tightly arranged and so effectively close the ventricular septal defect beneath the superior bridging leaflet, the VSD will be seen only below the inferior bridging leaflet as in shown in this example. We so far had seen the atrioventricular valve from the ventricular surface. In this picture, we see the atrioventricular valve from the atrial view. This will be the equivalent of surgeon's view. The superior and the inferior bridging leaflet here are named as S and I. And M refers to the left neural leaflet. The dilated left atrial appendage is shown anteriorly. The aortic root does not get wedged between the two AV valves as in a normal heart. In a complete AV septal defect, the aortic root is anteriorly displaced and aortic root is shown as AO. This will be a cartoonic example of the atrial view of AV septal defect. You can appreciate on the left hand of the screen, the left mural leaflet which corresponds to the posterior mitral leaflet, the large superior and inferior bridging leaflet which will correspond to two parts of the anterior mitral leaflet. So the left mural leaflet, superior and inferior bridging leaflet will be forming the left sided AV valve component. The right sided components are formed by the right anterior leaflet and right posterior leaflet. When we notice the atrial anfas view of the common AV valve, we can notice the superior and brid inferior bridging leaflets coming together in systole and form the zone of opposition. It is the zone of opposition between the superior and inferior bridging leaflets that is pointed out with an arrow in this example. On a subsiphoid long axis view, we can appreciate a large primum atrial septal defect and in addition there is a second atrial septal defect. On subsiphoid short axis view, when we analyze the AV septal defect, all the individual leaflets, we need to pay a considerable importance to the left mural leaflet. In this example, we can appreciate a well-formed, good-sized left mural leaflet that is located between the superior and the inferior bridging leaflets. A well-formed left mural leaflet is very important to have a long-term good result after an heavy septal defect repair. This particular example shows the right anterior and the right posterior leaflets also very well. Usually the AV valve leaflets are very well formed in patients who have trisomy 21 or Down syndrome. Patients with Down syndrome have got large well defined AV valve leaflets. On the same short axis view, when we sweep down towards the mid portions of the ventricular septum, we can notice two good sized right and left ventricular cavity and an equal commitment of the AV valve towards both the ventricles. This is a feature of balanced AV septal defect.
on a subsified short axis three dimensional view when we look at the basal portions of the atrioventricular valve and the basal portions of the ventricle we can notice that the atrioventricular orifice in diastole on the right ventricle and the left ventricle are roughly equal when the diastolic valve area in both the right and the left ventricles are symmetric the defect is defined as balanced aviceptal defect apical four chamber view shows equal size the right and the left ventricles a characteristic feature of balanced aviceptal defect we can also notice that the bridging leaflet cordae are attached to the crest of the interventricular septum representing rastelli a defect you can notice a good alignment between the atrial septal components and the ventricular septal components there is no malalignment there is a large second atrial septal defect and in addition a large prime atrial septal defect let us move on to complete description of a typical complete av septal defect rastelli a where the bridging leaflet cordae are attached to the crest of the interventricular septum this defect is also balanced because the atrioventricular valve orifice on the right and left side of the ventricles are symmetric and equal on an apical four chamber view we can appreciate the bridging leaflet cordae well attached to the crest of the interventricular septum the right and the left ventricular cavity are of equal comparable size there is a very large prime mast and a large second atrial septal defect in addition in patients where there is a right atrial enlargement the right atrial enlargement will make the atrial septum appear to be more on the left side of the atrial cavity so when we draw a line from the ventricular septum up towards the atrial septum they are not in proper alignment in this apical four chamber view however we can notice that the two ventricular cavities on the right and the left side are well developed and so this also will be a balanced av septal defect we can notice the bridging leaflet cordae getting attached to the crest of the interventricular septum so this will represent an usual rastelli type a av septal defect the inlet ventricular septal defects in av septal defects may be very large thereby causing similar pressures between the right and the left ventricles we can notice that even though there is no color flow across the ventricular septal defect there is a very large defect in this example a moderate av valve regurgitation is also shown arising from the zone of opposition between the superior and inferior bridging leaflets assessment of the location of the atrioventricular valve regurgitation is important during the repair of av septal defects if we carefully observe in this example we can notice that the av valve regurgitation is appearing on the left sided component in two jets one of the component is between the left mural leaflet and the inferior bridging leaflet the second component is between the superior and the inferior bridging leaflet there is also a milder component seen between the right anterior and right posterior leaflet so carefully analyzing all these individual jets to the point of origin of the regurgitant jets will indicate the location of the regurgitant orifice in the large common atrioventricular valve on a three dimensional echocardiogram the lv anfas view is shown here the entire posterior free wall of the left ventricle had been cropped off and the interventricular septal surface of the left ventricle is shown the left ventricle is shown below and the left atrium is shown above we can notice that there is a very large scooped out defect in the inlet septum both beneath the inferior and superior bridging leaflet this will represent 
a very large inlet ventricular septal defect below both the bridging leaflets. The same large scooped out inlet ventricular septal defect is now shown from the RV septal surface. This is a three dimensional echocardiogram after cropping off the right ventricular anterior free wall. The whole of the right ventricular septal surface is shown here. We can appreciate a large scooped inlet ventricular septal defect shown by all these arrows. And we can also appreciate the bridging leaflet cordae getting attached to the crest of the interventricular septum. There is, there are multiple defects seen below both the superior and inferior bridging leaflets. If the bridging leaflet cordae are very dense and they completely get attached towards the crest of the interventricular septum, they may obliterate the inlet ventricular septal defect. This is a cartoon example of the right ventricular septal surface on fast view that was seen in the previous slide. We can notice that all the bridging leaflet cords are getting attached towards the crest of the interventricular septum and there is a large inlet ventricular septal defect. The atrial surgeon's view of three-dimensional echocardiogram after cropping off the superior portions of the atria and visualizing the AV valve from above will show five leaflets in a complete AV septal defect. The superior and inferior bridging leaflets are named superiorly and inferiorly. The left mural leaflet is seen on the left side. The dextrodorsal leaflet is the other name for right anterior leaflet and right mural leaflet is the other name for right posterior leaflet. On a cartoon, the superior and the inferior bridging leaflets are shown from the atrial on fast view. We can appreciate that the location of the interventricular septum, the crest of the ventricular septal defect, will be overlying the commissures which are between the bridging leaflets and the right sided leaflets. In rastelli C defects, the bridging leaflet cordae do not have any attachment towards the crest of the interventricular septum or towards the right side of the septal surface. All the bridging leaflet cordae get attached towards the free wall of the right ventricle. In this example, we can appreciate a grossly hypertrophied right ventricle. There is a very large inlet ventricular septal defect. The bridging leaflet cordae are seen attaching towards the right anterior free wall. This is a feature of Rastelli type C AV septal defect. In the same example, there was in addition an anterior malalignment of the conal septum like a tetralogy of fallow. The anterior malaligned conal septum caused a right ventricular outflow tract subvalvar gradient. We can notice the mild doming of the pulmonic valve and the main pulmonary artery is not very dilated. On a short axis view we can notice that the two bridging leaflets are very large. The large superior bridging leaflet is overhanging the entire inlet ventricular septal defect and there is an anterior deviation of the conal septum. Bridging leaflets typically do not have any caudal attachment towards the interventricular septum in Rastelli type C. AV septal defects. This is another example of a Rastelli type C AV septal defect where the bridging leaflet cordae do not have any attachment towards the interventricular septum. There is also an anterior malalignment of the conal septum. However, the anterior deviation of the conal septum is not severe enough to cause a substantial right ventricular outflow tract obstruction. On this subsequent short axis view, we can notice an anterior malalignment of the coronal septum.
there is no severe right ventricular subvalvar outflow tract obstruction because the anterior deviation is not very substantial. Rastelli type C aviceptal defects are commonly seen in patients who have associated tetralogy of fellow double outlet right ventricle heterotaxis syndromes or single ventricular situations. In complete AV septal defect, the entire superior and the inferior bridging leaflets are well separated. In intermediate AV septal defect, even though the atrioventricular valve annulus is common, there is a small tongue of tissue that is connecting the superior and the inferior bridging leaflets. Compared to the frequency of complete AV septal defect, intermediate AV septal defects and transitional AV septal defects are relatively rare. This is an epical four chamber view of an intermediate type of AV septal defect where there is a moderate sized primary material septal defect and a moderate sized inlet ventricular septal defect shown with color flow. There are small tiny jets of AV valve regurgitation noted. In intermediate AV septal defect, some of the bridging leaflet cordae may get attached towards the crest of the interventricular septum and might restrict the anatomic size of the inlet ventricular septal defects. We can notice that there is a mild flow restriction to this VSD flow from left ventricle to right ventricle in systole. On an atrial ANFAS view, we can notice a common atrioventricular valve annulus. The Iotic root is anteriorly displaced by this common AV valve ring. We can notice a small tongue of tissue between the superior and inferior bridging leaflets that is connecting them together so they are not getting separated away. The triangular orifice on the left sided AV valve annulus will represent the gap between the superior and inferior bridging leaflet and the left mural leaflet. From the ventricular view, we can again notice that the superior and the inferior bridging leaflets are not totally getting separated off because of the bridging small tongue of tissue. We can again notice that the left sided AV valve component is like a tri leaflet AV valve component. On atrial on fast view, the gap between the superior and the inferior bridging leaflet is called as the zone of opposition or the cleft of the anterior mitral leaflet. The differentiating feature between an intermediate AV septal defect and a transitional AV septal defect is that intermediate AV septal defect will have a common atrioventricular annulus whereas transitional AV septal defect will have fairly well divided atrioventricular valve annulus. In this atrial on fast view we can notice that even though there are two separate valve orifices that are seen which is caused by the small bridging tongue of tissue between the superior and inferior bridging leaflet. There is a common AV valve annulus. This is a feature of intermediate type of AV septal defect. Usually in intermediate type of AV septal defects the primum atrial septal defect and inlet ventricular septal defect will be moderate to large in size. In this three dimensional echocardiogram a ventricular view of the AV septal defect is shown and we can see the color flows beneath the superior bridging leaflet through a large inlet ventricular septal defect. Intermediate type of AV septal defects are associated with moderate to large sized ventricular septal defects. We can notice the broad color jet of the inlet ventricular septal defect in this subsifoid ventricular view of the three dimensional echocardiogram. On a 3D unfast view from the right ventricular septal surface after cropping off the right ventricular anterior free wall, we can notice that the inlet ventricular septal defect in this example is primarily confined below the superior bridging leaflet. All the caudal tissues from the bridging leaflet have closed off the inlet VSD beneath the inferior bridging leaflet whereas the defect below the superior bridging leaflet is still persisting to cause a left right shunt. 
Now we move on to the transitional type of aviceptal defect where there are two separate rings of heavy valve annulus. There is a small bridging tongue of tissue between the superior and the inferior bridging leaflet. The mitral valve appears like a tri-leaflet valve with two parts of the anterior mitral leaflet formed by the superior and inferior bridging leaflet and the left mural leaflet will be an equivalent of the posterior leaflet of the mitral valve. On an apical four chamber view, we can notice that there is a large primum mitral septal defect. There is a moderate left sided AV valve regurgitation. The bridging leaflet cordae completely attached towards the crest of the interventricular septum, thereby closing off the entire inlet ventricular septal defect. On the subsified short axis view, we can notice the zone of opposition between the superior and inferior bridging leaflet. The V-shaped atrioventricular valve leaflets seen on the left ventricle will represent the zone of opposition between the superior and inferior bridging leaflet, which will also be referred to as the cleft of the anterior mitral leaflet. We can notice that there is no color jet across the interventricular septal defect. It is totally closed off by the caudal attachments from the bridging leaflet. On the ventricular unfast view of the AV valves, after cropping off the apical and mid portions of the ventricles, we can appreciate the zone of opposition between the superior and inferior bridging leaflet, referred to as the cleft of anterior mitral leaflet. The cleft of anterior mitral leaflet in AV septal defect is directed towards the interventricular septum. In isolated cleft of anterior mitral leaflet, it will be directed towards the left ventricular outflow anteriorly. In this view, we can also appreciate the left ventricular outflow tract anterior to the AV valve annulus. Atrial unfast view of three-dimensional echocardiogram shows that the left-sided AV valve component is formed by the zone of opposition between the superior and inferior bridging leaflet named as S and I. The dilated two atrial appendages are shown as left atrial appendage and right atrial appendage. When we carefully look at the inlet ventricular septum in patients with transitional AV septal defect, we notice that all the bridging leaflet cordae getting very closely attached to the crest of the interventricular septum, thereby totally obliterating the inlet VSDs. Sometimes there may be small color jets. These bridging leaflet cordae that gets attached towards the crest of the interventricular septum may bow out towards the right ventricle in cistern to form tricuspid valve pouches. In this apical four chamber view, we can appreciate a thin tricuspid valve pouch formed by bulging of the septal attachment of the bridging leaflets. However, there is no color flow across this bulging pouch indicating that there is no patent ventricular septal defect. Some of these tricuspid valve pouches formed by the bridging leaflet attachment towards the crest of the interventricular septum may be very thick as shown in this example. We can appreciate a thick septal pouch. In most of the transitional AV septal defects, the ventricular septal defect will be very restrictive or almost absent. Unlike the previous examples, in this example of transitional AV septal defect, the bridging leaflet cordae are not completely attached to the crest of the in interventricular septum. There is a tricuspid valve pouch, but through the tricuspid valve pouch, there is also a color flow from the left ventricle into the right ventricle, indicating the presence of a restrictive inlet ventricular septal defect. In a transitional levi septal defect, there can be jets directly from the left ventricle towards the right atrium, 
due to regurgitant orifice from the bridging leaflet through the primary material septal defect into the right atrium. This will actually represent an AV well regurgitation from the left ventricle towards the right atrium. In the last few examples of transitional AV septal defects, we had been noticing that the inlet ventricular septal defect is either very small or totally closed off. The definition of transitional AV septal defect is based on presence of two separate AV valve rings. Sometimes there can be two separate AV valve rings without a primary material septal defect but with a large inlet ventricular septal defect. This is a four chamber view of a patient who presented with a large inlet ventricular septal defect. There was no primary material septal defect because the atrial septum was totally attached to the AV valve rings. The bridging leaflet cordae were attached to the crest of the interventricular septum. On a subsequent short axis view, we can notice a very large inlet ventricular septal defect primarily below the superior bridging leaflet. The two AV valve orifices are well separated. There is a separate right and left AV valve ring. However, the inlet ventricular septal defect is located beneath the superior bridging leaflet. So these isolated large inlet ventricular septal defects also will represent a variant of transitional AV septal defects. On a parasternal short axis view, we can notice a large inlet ventricular septal defect located primarily below the superior bridging leaflet. We can notice that the bridging leaflet cordae are getting attached towards the crest of the interventricular septum. On a three-dimensional echocardiogram, the right ventricular unfast septal view, where the right ventricular anterior free wall is entirely cropped off, to show the entire right ventricular septal surface, we can appreciate a large inlet ventricular septal defect located primarily below the superior bridging leaflet. These isolated inlet ventricular septal defects with well-formed AV valve rings also will represent transitional forms of AV septal defects. We now move on to more common form of AV septal defect namely the partial AV septal defect. Here there is a large primary material septal defect and there is a cleft of the anterior mitral leaflet which will represent the zone of opposition between the superior and the inferior bridging leaflet. There is no inlet ventricular septal defect and there are two good well formed atrioventricular valve rings. In this transesophageal echocardiogram we can notice a very large primary material septal defect, two well formed atrioventricular valve rings, dilated right ventricle due to right ventricular volume overload absence of an inlet ventricular septal defect. On color flow Doppler, we can notice that there is a mild central mitral regurgitation jet originating from the zone of opposition between the two bridging leaflets or in other words, the cleft of the anterior mitral leaflet. Sometimes the left sided AV valve regurgitation may be between the regions between the left mural leaflet and the bridging leaflet. In this example, we can notice that the regurgitant jet is primarily from the places where the left mural leaflet coaps with the bridging leaflet. On a three dimensional echocardiogram, atrial on fast view, we can notice the large cleft of the anterior mitral leaflet directed towards the interventricular septum. The iota is anteriorly displaced as is the feature of all the AV septal defects. You can notice that because of the mitral valve cleft, the mitral valve looks like a dry leaflet structure. On this still frame of the atrial unfast view on three dimensional echocardiogram, the arrow points to the cleft of the anterior mitral leaflet 
which represents the zone of opposition between the superior bridging leaflet anteriorly and the inferior bridging leaflet posteriorly. We can also notice the large left neural leaflet. The aortic root is displaced far anteriorly. In partial AV septal defects, the cleft is directed towards the interventricular septum. Whereas in isolated clefts of the anterior mitral leaflet, the cleft will be directed towards the left ventricular outflow tract and towards the aortic valve. On a ventricular on fast view of the atrioventricular valve, again we can notice that the cleft is directed towards the ventricular septum. There will be a lot of cordial attachment from this cleft tissue, which will represent the bridging leaflets towards the interventricular septum. A normal mitral valve will not have any caudal attachment directed towards the interventricular septum at all. A mitral valve in a normal patient is said to be septophobic. That means the cordae are directed away from the septum. However, in all patients with cleft anterior mitral leaflet, there will be caudal tissues that arise from this cleft of the anterior mitral leaflet or the bridging leaflets towards the interventricular septum. On this three-dimensional echocardiogram, when we include the mid portions of the ventricles too, we will appreciate very clearly the leaflet and the caudal attachment from the cleft towards the interventricular septum. A common feature of all the AV septal defect is anterior displacement of the aortic root by the AV valve annulus. While in a normal heart, the aortic annulus is wedged between the tricuspid and the mitral valve annulus and is located more posteriorly in all the types of AV septal defects. The left ventricular outflow tract and the aortic root gets displaced anteriorly. This will increase the length from the aortic annulus to the left ventricular apex. In normal hearts, the inlet axis and the outlet axis will be equal. The inlet axis refers to the distance between the AV valve annulus in the region of crux of the AV valve to the apex of the left ventricle. The outlet axis refers to the distance between the aortic annulus and the apex of the left ventricle. In normal hearts, the distance between the crux of the left ventricle to the apex of the left ventricle will be equal to the distance between the aortic annulus to the apex of the left ventricle. In AV septal defects, since the aortic valve is anteriorly and superiorly displaced, the outlet axis which refers to the distance between the aortic annulus to the LV apex will be longer than the inlet axis which will be the distance between the crux of the heart and the LV apex. This will give the appearance of a gooseneck deformity or elongation of the left ventricular outflow tract. This can be appreciated on subsified coronal view. Even though the term gooseneck deformity is typically used on angiographic LBOT views, it can also be appreciated on a subsified coronal view. We can notice in this example that the inlet axis is smaller the outlet axis is longer, giving an elongated appearance of the left ventricular outflow tract, which will be representing the region of the gooseneck. Assessment of atrioventricular valves in AV septal defect is of great importance in planning the surgical strategy. We should notice the presence, severity, and location of the atrioventricular valve leaks the size of the left mural leaflet and papillary muscle spacing. In apical four chamber view, we need to appreciate the location of the jets of the atrioventricular valve leaks. In this example, we can notice that there are separate three jets of atrioventricular valve regurgitation. The narrow jet that is seen on the right hand end of the screen is between the left mural leaflet and the bridging leaflets. The jet seen on the left hand end of the screen 
will be between the right anterior and posterior leaflets. We can also appreciate that there is a broad jet in between the two, which will represent the jet between the two bridging leaflets. The presence and location of the two papillary muscles in the left ventricle also should be noted with care. In this example of subsified short axis view, we can notice that the two papillary muscles are located very close to each other. Both are located in around 3 o'clock location of the cavity of the left ventricle. When the two papillary muscles are totally fused, then it will be like a parachute mitral valve. This is an example of a parachute mitral valve with a single papillary muscle in the left ventricle. We can notice one single papillary muscle at around 3 o'clock location. When there is a single papillary muscle, the left mural leaflet is not well formed at all. If the left mural leaflet is very well formed, the two papillary muscles which support the commissure on either end of the left mural leaflet will be located far apart. When the two papillary muscles are becoming closer and closer, that indicates the left mural leaflet is becoming smaller and smaller. An extremely diminutive left mural leaflet will be associated with a single papillary muscle. In these patients, if we approximate the zone of opposition between the superior and inferior bridging leaflets, that will result in significant AV valve stenosis. So we need to appreciate the distance between the papillary muscles carefully in all patients with AV septal defects. In this example, we can identify that the two papillary muscles are located very close to each other. The two papillary muscles can be identified around 3 o'clock location in relation to the cavity of the left ventricle. We can notice that the left mural leaflet in this patient is quite small. When we look at the two papillary muscles distance on three-dimensional echocardiogram, from the ventricular view, we can notice the two papillary muscles located quite close to each other. They are roughly located at 5 o'clock and 6 o'clock locations on this rotated picture. The other points that should be noted in patients with AV septal defects are presence of additional muscular ventricular septal defects. We also should notice features of bidirectional shunting which will represent high pulmonary vascular resistance. Left-sided left obstructive diseases are also common in AV septal defects. In this apical four-chamber view, we can appreciate along with the large inlet ventricular septal defect and the large primum atrial septal defect, there are multiple muscular ventricular septal defects representing a Swiss cheese apical septum. High pulmonary vascular resistance is quite common in patients with AV septal defects. The majority of AV septal defects will be associated with chromosomal abnormalities like trisomy 21, which causes an accelerated pulmonary vascular resistance development due to associated hypoxia caused by airway obstruction and lung diseases. This will result in an early development of bidirectional flows across the ventricular septal defect and result in clinical desaturation. In this fourth chamber view, there is a large ventricular septal defect, but we can notice that the flows across the inlet ventricular septal defect is bidirectional and mostly right to left. The color flows across both the atrial septum and ventricular septum are bidirectional and there is a moderate degrees of atrioventricular valve regurgitation in this patient. Obstructions to left ventricular inflow and outflow can happen in AV septal defects. This is an example of cartilage ratum in a patient with AV septal defect. We can notice the obstructive membrane within the left atrium causing a flow turbulence in the left ventricular inflow region. Epical four-chamber view shows a dilated coronary sinus 
which is representing the persistence of left superior vena cava. The coronary sinus is fully roofed. We can also notice that in addition, there is a cartridge, a divided left atrium. There is an obstructive membrane seen in the middle of the cavity of the left atrium. On a magnified view, we can appreciate the obstructive cartridge atrium very clearly. We can also notice the dilated coronary sinus on the left atrioventricular valve annular area. Color Doppler interrogation shows the turbulence across the cartridge atrium, which indicates pulmonary venous hypertension. The surgical treatment of heavy septal defect will involve closure of the atrial and ventricular septal defects and separation of the two atrioventricular valves to create a biventricular heart. However, this is not achievable in all patients. Some of the patients we may have to resort to an univentricular approach by performance of bidirectional glen and fontan surgeries. In AV septal defects which are unbalanced, we will not be able to complete a surgical repair. In this epical four chamber view, we can appreciate a common AV canal with a large primum ASD and an inlet VSD. The bridging leaflet cordae are attached to the crest of the interventricular septum indicating that it is a rastellate IPA defect. However, the left ventricle is very hypoplastic and both the great arteries are arising from the morphological right ventricle. This will represent an AV canal with a hypoplastic left ventricle and double outlet right ventricle. In these patients, it will be technically very challenging to do an AV septal repair and even after performance of an AV septal repair, the left ventricular cavity will not be adequate enough to sustain the systemic circulation. So this unbalanced AV canal where right ventricle is very dominant should go for a univentricular approach. On color flow interrogation, we can notice that there is a moderate atic valve regurgitation and markedly hypoplastic left ventricle. Sometimes AV septal defects can happen with hypoplastic right ventricle and a dominant left ventricle. This is an example of a modified epical view where the right ventricle is very hypoplastic and left ventricle is dominant. In heterotaxy syndromes, sometimes a single ventricle may be supporting a common AV valve. This is an example of a morphological right ventricle in the setting of heterotaxy. These patients also will go for a univentricular repair. However, we can notice in this patient that there is a substantial ventricular systolic dysfunction. Some patients with AV septal defects may have mild post great arteries with anterior right and posterior pulmonary artery and may have associated severe subvalvar and valvar pulmonary stenosis. These patients also are ideally treated by univentricular approach. This is an unbalanced AV canal defect in the setting of dextrocardia. We can notice that the morphological left ventricle is very well developed whereas the morphological right ventricle is very poorly developed. This is in the setting of cytosine versus totalis. In this epical four chamber view, we can also appreciate that the bridging leaflets are free floating and do not have any attachment towards the crest of the interventricular septum. In these last few examples, we saw situations in AV septal defect where we may have to resort to any ventricular strategy. They will include unbalanced AV septal defects where the left ventricle or the right ventricle may be dominant in heterotaxy syndromes in free floating AV valves in association with single ventricles or in complex dextrocardia situations we may not be able to achieve a yeah, biventricular repair. To summarize AV septal defects may be grouped as complete AV septal defects, intermediate and transitional AV septal defects and partial AV septal defects. The complete and partial AV septal defects are more common than the intermediate and transitional types of AV septal defects. The older rastelli classification is based on the attachment of the superior bridging leaflet cordae to the crest of the interventricular septum in type A 
to the right ventricular side of the interventricular septum in type B and the free wall of the right ventricle in type C. AV septal defects are grouped as balanced and unbalanced depending on adequacy of the left and right ventricle. There may be associations in AV septal defect like presence of additional muscular ventricular septal defects, left superior vena cava draining to coronary sinus, left ventricular inflow obstructions in the form of cartilage ratum, left ventricular outflow tract obstruction in the form of subvalvar aortic stenosis and coarctation, and sometimes AV canal may be associated with tetralogy. An AV valve should be carefully be assessed for its morphology, interpapillary muscle distance, size of the left mural leaflet, and presence of double orifices.